Welcome to the Micro Safari. My name is Sarush and I'll be your tour guide on this wacky little alien adventure as we explore through the microscopic landscapes of our soils and just uh, see what kind of little, little critters we can find. As you can already tell, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. You got some springtails, you got a little annelid over here trying to run away. Also, I have a, having a big problem with uh, this water condensing on my microscope slide, so bear with me on this. Got a little nematode guy, kind of schlooping around. Let's get a good zoom in on him here. Or her. Or maybe it's a hermaphrodite, who knows? Oh yeah, there we go. Oh cool, and you can, ooh, you can actually see their little, um, little ame amoebas or something that are swimming around in this little thing of gloop over here. Very transparent, but you can see they have, you know, they have all this internal complexity to them. Organs and stuff. Who knew? One a common theme you'll find in these, these safari slides. Oh, which by the way, we're looking at a safari slide here. This is a part of my micro safari product. Uh, so it's, it's this little micro ecosystem habitat that has a whole ecosystem of little creatures running around, kind of like an ant farm, but instead of ants, it's a whole universe of little creatures to explore. They like they eat each other, reproduce and stuff like that. Um, oh, this is so cool. Okay, because yeah, they have, it's almost like these little amoebas have like bright gemstones or something in them. So cool. So these guys are probably about the right size that they would eat bacteria. So we can't actually see bacteria at this zoom level here, but you know, of course there are lots and lots of bacteria in here. So we have this little, you know, there's, okay, so there's a piece of schmoo or whatever, a little piece of dirt, a little maybe decaying leaf or something in here that has water that's sticking to this little piece of, of stuff. And then all these organisms are stuck inside the water too. And so that's what's going on here is they're kind of trapped in this little water world, so to speak. They can't really escape out of it. The surface tension is just too strong for them. But let's see what else we can find real quick. So there's lots of other, you know, bigger organisms. So here we got a little springtail, quite a few little springtails running around. Oh, it looks like we actually found a springtail that itself is trapped in a droplet of water. Let's see what's going on over here. Aw. Oh, poor thing. <laughs> It's a little baby springtail that got trapped in this little droplet of water. And I'm assuming he'll be fine. You know, this water will evaporate hopefully soon. The water dynamics in here are a little bit, you know, they change quite a bit. So fingers crossed that he'll be able to get out of there at some point. And of course, these little, these little springtails that are running around are, uh, they look like insects, but they're not really insects. They're hexapods, technically, very closely related insects. They sure do run around a lot like insects, but easily the most common organism inside of these micro safaris. I don't know what it is that makes them so favored to these environments, but they, almost in every single one of these things that I've made, they always tend to grow to be the most uh, common population. Probably second to that is, is uh, the, are these little nematode worms. So you can see this little guy running around in this little sloopy pile of water and stuff. They, you know, they just kind of wiggle around. That's what they do. Let's see what else we got. Which, by the way, these springtails, they're called springtails because, believe it or not, they got a spring on their tail. Hmm. You can use that to kind of jump around like little fleas and stuff when they're scared. It's not super common that they will jump around in here just because they don't have any predators that are big enough to fit inside this little safari slide. But, you know, sometimes if the, there's like light that shines on them, they get a little startled. You'll see them jump and it basically looks like they just teleport to another spot because they, they jump around so fast. I'm hoping we'll see some soil mites here. Ooh, okay, yeah, here we go. Here's a little soil mite. Man, speak of the devil. Okay, yeah, we got, here's, oh, let's zoom in before he runs away. These guys are so camera shy. They always just try and run away. 
And they always somehow know that I'm trying to take a photo of them, take a video of them, I mean. Uh, okay, one of my favorite organisms, and yet they're, they're just so elusive. Maybe we'll find another one that's... So yeah, again, you can see this, this water condensation thing that's going on here. All these little droplets that are forming are because of the lights on the microscope. In fact, let me just show you my microscope set up real quick to you know, give you a little insight into what's going on here. So I have this really fancy looking microscope uh, that I, long story, got medical surplus for real cheap and I've rigged it up to record one of these little safari slides. So we have the lights that are shining on it, of course, because you need that for a microscope to operate properly. But one of the issues I'm coming to here is that the lights will cause the water to condense on the the like inside surface surface of this thing, and so you can see it forms these tiny little droplets that reflect the light and just make it look like there's a white fog everywhere. So that's one ongoing challenge I need to figure out as we move move forward in this uh, series. By the way, more to come. Stay tuned. Subscribed if you're interested in this content. Um, we're gonna. Oh, there's so much to explore. So many ecosystems, even within this one ecosystem. I mean, we've gotten through, I don't know, one one hundredth of the total interesting stuff that you could find in here. Maybe even more than that. Um, what am I trying to show you here? Okay, so check these things, little these little things out. These are pretty sweet. Um, so if you just came across these randomly, you'd be like, what is this? Now, I have insider knowledge as to what these are. These are shed skins of springtails, so they molt like other, I shouldn't say other insects, but they molt just like insects. And for whatever reason, their molted skins take on this beautiful, like, opal, opalescent color. I don't know if it's, it's just a iridescent phenomena or what, but so pretty. What's going on with that? Okay, looking over here, see if I can find a soil mite to show you guys. They're just so elusive. I think they they dislike the light a lot more than these springtails do. I mean, because if you think about it, these are all soil organisms, and so they try and run away from light usually because that means that they're on the surface and they can be easily seen by predators. Um, where you know, whereas in this environment there aren't any actual predators that can get them. Um, in fact, the soil mites, the ones that are running away, are the basically the top dog in here. They're the ones that will go and hunt springtail babies and try and snatch up eggs when the springtail moms aren't looking, guarding their little nests. Speaking of which, I bet I can zoom over, because <clears throat> I think I know in this cartridge where, where some, yep, there we go, cool. Oh, it looks like maybe they've hashed. Okay, yeah, so immediately as I come over here, you can see the water just immediately fog up this this little environment here, which, you know, it's kind of interesting in and of itself to see how the, you know, I need to make a time lapse of this or something, see the, how the water will consolidate and then re-evaporate. It's kind of like it has its own little mini water cycle when you start applying thermal cycling to it. Um, but anyway, here are some little egg clutches springtail egg clutches. So they do reproduce in here. And it looks like this is a little baby that's hatched so recently, very recently, but oh man, they're just so cute. Just the proportions of them or something. But they have little tiny legs. I think also they have eyes somehow that makes them cute. And I don't think they're actually eyes, like how we have eyes. I think they're just light sensitive organs. So they don't really have resolution, but they can tell light or dark. It's my speculation. Don't really know for sure. Uh, if you're a ent ent springtail entomologist, please let me know in the comments section below. Also, the plan of this series is to be continually improving the content. I mean, there's so much content to go through here, and there's so many interesting creatures that have interesting interactions. Um, you know. There's just so much to explore here, and I want to share this with you guys. Um, and I want to improve this content, so if there's anything you think I should improve, anything you want to see more of, let me know in the comment section below, and I'll 
do my best to make it happen. And I promise that springtails are not the only creatures in here. There are, is this whole diversity of soil mites that are just very rare, uh, both because in, in pure numbers, they're not that many. So it's, you know, it's kind of like finding a rare Pokemon or something, where when you do find that one, you know, that, that one soil mite that has like two extremely long butt hairs in the end for no good reason. It's, you know, it's so satisfying to find them. So hopefully we'll find them here. Uh, okay, well, ooh, we found one of the kinds of soil mites. Ooh, yeah, here's a mean looking guy. Okay, definitely one of the predatory soil mites. Um, and of course now it goes to run away, but oh yeah. These guys are the ones that catch the springtail babies and run away with their eggs. They, you know, they look very predatory. I don't know what it is. Intuitively, I at least think they look very predatory. Of course, I've also seen them in action hunting because I've been doing this for who knows how many years, at least four maybe. Uh, um, anyway, hopefully, come on, come on out, little buddy. You're the star of the show. But yeah, all these all these organisms have kind of their own superpowers in here. Um, what is going on over here? Is this like a little nematode or something? Oh. Okay. Oh, is this a different kind of soul mite? Ooh, I think it is. Hello. Oh, it's maybe the same kind, but a baby of it. Not sure. Okay, here's what I was actually seeing. It's just a little nematode that's bearing in this piece of dirt, and hmm, it's, it's interesting. But yeah, once I figure, once I fix this this condensation problem, these videos will be a significantly clearer and more high quality. I mean, it's kind of interesting, just in and of itself. You can see them merging together, forming coalescing, forming larger droplets. Anyway, I was talking about superpowers. So each of these organisms kind of has its own unique, interesting ways that it ends up surviving in this ecosystem. So for example, the, the soil mites, oh, here it came back out. Let's get a little zoom in here. Some of these species have an insane double tongue, a telescoping double tongue that can just shoot out of their mouth, and bend around corners. It's the craziest thing. It's almost like an anteater, actually. Even the length of the tongue is impressively long, almost the same length as their body. Hey, Fran, come over here, little guy. Come on out. We just want to appreciate your morphology. Always like hiding under this little piece. So skittish, so camera shy. Ah, <sighs> can't can't win them all. Oh, oh, ooh, hello, what is this? I think this might be a different type of soil mite? Oh, yeah. Oh, I think it's eating right now, too. Oh, ooh, maybe its tongues will come out. Come on, go and focus. I think I actually need to be a little bit more zoomed out. Bye. Oh, yeah, here we go. You can tell this one's different just by the way it is. Look, it's all long. It's way longer than the other ones. Which, by the way, soil mites are one of the most diverse animals that are on the planet. I mean, these guys are found in soils all over the world. Same with springtails. I mean, these are, you know, being like, oh, that's a soil mite. It's kind of like being, oh, that's a bird. You know, it's, they're, they're just so diverse and so spaced out all over the world. Um, and really, you know, they're not really represented in our popular discourse, even though they're one of the most common animals on planet Earth. Um, so, I mean, a lot of these creatures in here are actually the most common animals on planet Earth. So the, the nematodes, for one, are the most common animal on planet Earth. And, you know, I'd speculate a guess that maybe 60% of people haven't heard of them, which is insane to me. And that's, you know, that's part of this channel. I want to help educate that, hey, there's this whole other world out there that we just can't see with our, our own little, very sad human eyes that can't see, can't see half the world. 
But yeah, oh man. I love going through and finding new creatures in here because every time they always are, you know, have these weird features or do stuff that you don't expect. I remember once finding a an insect that, or I don't, who knows what it is. I thought it was an insect. Maybe it's a hexapod. Maybe it's something else. Also, look at this interesting, very crystal clear white banding that's on this guy. And what's up with that little square patch and that little tear teardrop patch that was on it? What evolutionary benefit is there to them having that white versus brown contrast? Maybe it's a mating thing? Who knows? Who knows? If you're into soil mites, let me know in the comments. <laughs> if you know it more than I do, let me know. I'm just some dude who does this for fun. But if you're, uh, you know, someone who's actually studied this, I would love to learn more about this kind of stuff. I mean, I, you know, all the learning that I've done here is just through observation and, you know, some, some quick Googling and reading a couple research papers here and there. But, you know, I do my best to focus on seeing this per from the perspective of, you know, just an ordinary guy kind of trying to explore and see what, see what he can find. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up for, for today. Stay tuned, like I said. Subscribe if you like this content. Let me know what you want fixed and we'll, uh, you know, we'll make it happen. Also, check out the link in the description if you want to learn more about the micro safari. Uh, if you want to follow along at home, go ahead and grab one. And I'll see you guys next time.